Hello everyone and welcome to DC Central. In today's video we're going to be breaking down and reviewing Supergirl Season 4 Episode 11, otherwise entitled Blood Memories. And if you have not seen this episode, make sure you go and do that before you watch this video as it will be filled with spoilers and don't worry, we'll still be here when you've seen it. So episode 11 is following up from the mid-season premiere of Supergirl season 4 which was actually a pretty decent episode for the season I must say and ended on a very interesting place where we saw Alex actually get her memory erased or at least the memories of Kara being Supergirl meaning that she now no longer knows that her sister is Supergirl so this created an interesting kind of dynamic and something new and very fresh and definitely something very interesting going forward for the season and I was interested to see how this was all going to develop in this episode and also how it's going to develop in the season going on. So just to quickly touch upon that uh, it seems like that the whole way they're doing this is they're making a pretty much a split between Alex where with Kara she's very much just as she would be normally and then when it comes to Supergirl she is incredibly standoffish with her and very very withdrawn from her and very you know kind of anti uh, Supergirl in a way and doesn't really like working with her doesn't really like the fact that she is just around and kind of just being a vigilante in a way she's not a fan of that so I kind of like the way they're playing this and I think Shiloh Lee's doing a good job as always um, because what I quite like is that Jean brings up a good point where you know he says all those memories of you know Kara being an alien and things like that and being uh, being Supergirl that completely you know that was seeded within Alex from a very young age and that means that she has she's had this perception of aliens all her life and it's all been because of Kara and because of Supergirl and now that all those memories have been erased she no longer remembers that she no longer thinks of things that way she doesn't have those memories so her perception on everything has changed and I think that's actually a really good way to play it. I didn't think of that and I actually thought that was really interesting so I have to give props to the writers there because I think that was actually a really clever way and an interesting way to put it. Now, one of the main storylines going on in this episode is we have this new drug going around, which is somehow affected by Red Kara, but I'll get to Red Kara later. But this drug is going around, and it basically turns people into rage-fueled monsters. If you remember back to the original Flash Arrow crossover from a few years ago, the Brave and the Bold one, when there was that guy who could basically just turn people mad into, like, rage people. Yeah, it's kind of like that, except this one actually gives you, like, a deformed body. Um, yeah, I, I have to be honest, I wasn't a fan of this. I mean, the CGI, when people turn into these monsters, was dreadful. And it just was kind of cringy. I, I just didn't like it at all. I thought it was just one of them things that, you know, they kind of just needed a threat in this episode because the main bulk of the episode and the main story had no threat at all. So it was kind of just like we needed something to have some kind of threat and for something to Alex and Brainy to do. So that's what they went with. And also I have to say the dealers who eventually were started to distribute these drugs were just the most horrific characters. I mean, Supergirl has some really bad side characters at times, but these were like up there with like uh, with like Mercy and Otis Graves. They were just awful characters. I hated them they were so stereotypical they were annoying they were awful and i just could be doing with any of that so i'm glad uh, i'm glad that you know they were disposed of pretty quickly so the main bulk of this episode focuses on Kara and Nia going to Nia's family for this particular festival that she attends every single year. And we go there, we get to spend some time with her family and realise what's going on with her. It's interesting because Nia as a character is somebody who is quickly developing into a, into a hero and this is something that you know I've been very vocal about, I'm not a fan of how quickly they're doing this. Um, but I think, you know, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what they do with her going forward with that storyline. But to actually give her some development and give her some backstory was definitely welcome and I enjoyed all that. And her family were pretty uh, decent characters for the most part. Uh, her sister was a bit of an odd one. They had this whole thing where, you know, only one member of the generation or like one female member of the generation actually gets the powers and the sister believes that she is the one who's destined to have these powers she really wants the powers but then it is actually Nia who's withholding that from her is not telling her that she has the powers so there's a bit of conflict going on there um, which does result in an interesting dilemma which they bring up which is that you know not only did Nia not tell her about the fact that she had the powers but also how does she actually have the powers because it's supposed to go to the female members but Nia isn't genetically a female she's obviously she's transgender so how did that actually happen um which was something I didn't even think about like I was just kind of assuming oh yeah she's the one who got it not the other one but yeah that actually is a good point like how did Nia actually get the powers um because if she is not genetically a female then how did that happen um so I'm definitely interested to see if they explain that or if, if they're going to do that but you know I I think it was kind of weird just to kind of do that but for the most part all this family drama and really establishing what the dream sequences are going to be like was definitely something that needed to be done to sort of lay the groundwork going forward. 
Also, strange continuity error, uh, Nia's father is played by the same actor who played Justin Claiborne in Arrow Season 5, so Prometheus's father. Um, I don't know why they didn't just get a different actor for this, I don't know why they, <laughs> why they got the same guy. Especially when the multiverse exists, so technically, you know, in my Arrowverse mind, I'm thinking that this is the Earth-38 version of Justin Claiborne, so where's the Earth-38 version of Adrian Chase? It's just, it's so weird, and because I, I was watching the episode thinking to myself, where do I know that guy from? Like, I really know, I recognize him. I kept thinking it was the same guy who played Caitlyn Snow's father on The Flash this season, but it wasn't, and I, I knew it wasn't him, and I IMDB'd it, and yeah, it was, it's Justin Claiborne, so... Yeah, if you're wondering where he's from, that's him. Uh, so yeah, that's a bit of a continuity error. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's just something that's just going to have to slip by, but it's definitely an interesting talking point nonetheless. Now, Nia is really freaking out about all this sister drama she's having. You know, she's saying that she doesn't want to, you know, have all this drama. And this is when Kara eventually I reveals her identity to Nia because she believes it will help her with the situation. Uh, it's nice to have this out in the open. I mean, we all knew this was kind of coming over the next couple episodes because we knew Nia was going to be suiting up soon. So we kind of had to get this done at some point. I have to admit, I didn't expect it in this episode, but it was cool to actually get it. And it was, you know, it was good. It was done in a good way. It wasn't like a forced or, you know, kind of just overly, you know, dramatic way. It was done in a way that, you know, could actually help Nia and things like that. So I do appreciate the way they did that. And again, just revealing Kara's identity to another person, you know, especially when we've kind of lost one. It's kind of, I guess it balances everything out. So I was kind of okay with the way they did this. Now, finally, I'll talk about Red Kara. She shows up at the beginning and the end of the episode. Uh, at the beginning, she does another one of those big, you know, map battle sequences, and she realizes she has a nosebleed. She's taken into, into like, the medical bay. And at the very end of the episode, we have one of the uh, Russian commanders get on the phone and says, I need to speak to somebody from America. So it seems like the Soviets are looking to get some help from the US to help with this Red Kara project. So, who could it be? Like, who do they need to speak to from America? My first thought would be, would it be Kara herself? But then, I don't really feel like they're going to want to bring Kara into this storyline so quickly. Uh, and given the fact that we haven't seen much from this character much since the mid-season uh, premiere, I think it could be Lena. I think Lena is going to be involved in this. I feel like she is, you know, with the stuff with the High Ranel and things like that. You know, what she was developing last season and where she was sort of beginning at the beginning of this season. I feel like Lena is definitely the one, especially because they did some kind of hinting with like genetic engineering with Lena in this episode. Like there was a few hints between, you know, an a employee at Catco and James and things like that. They were talking about it. So I feel like, you know, Lena is definitely going to be involved in this and that is who they're after. Like, or at least someone from LexCorp. It could, it could be Lex. We do know we're getting Lex this season. We saw that photo with John Cryer. So Lex is in this season as well. So could it be Lex? Could it be Lena? I definitely think it's Elcorp. Like Elcorp is involved with this. So, you know, when they're talking about they need to speak to somebody from America, I reckon that's got to be doing with LexCorp. Whether it's Lena or Lex, we'll have to wait and see. Overall, I think Supergirl, it's, it is getting better. Slowly and surely, it is getting better this season. Uh, it started out incredibly horrifically, but it, it's getting there. It is getting there. So I think, you know, each episode is getting better. Um, I think this episode overall, I mean, I didn't like the drug storyline, although I did quite like how they tied it into the Nia storyline by the end. I was quite impressed by that. I didn't think they were going to do that. I thought it was going to be a completely separate thing, but they do tie it back in, which was interesting. Uh, but besides that storyline, I thought all the stuff with Nia was great. I did like her family. I did like the way they developed it, the way they went with it. And, you know, the potential return of her sister. I think, you know, that's an un you know, that's a loose thread there. They need to tie up. Uh, and also just revealing Kara's identity. Again, further pushing Nia into the dreamer role that we're going to see her take on. And just the more hints with Red Kara. Like, I am getting a lot more interested in Red Kara now. The more and more we see of her. We're seeing a lot more of her now. So I'm definitely interested where they're going to go with her. And if it's going to be tied into Lex. And like, if this is how Lex comes into the story. Like, if this is his role. I think that could be very fun and could actually set up something really interesting for Season 5. So I'm definitely a lot more interested in Season 4 now than I was a few weeks ago. So thank you guys for watching this episode of DC Central. If you want to see more DC videos, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss an upload. And I hope to see you guys again next time.